Hello everyone, uh, this is part two of our IFR Arrivals tutorial. While we're sitting here in the lovely TBM 930, uh, definitely a solid choice as far as aircraft for this purpose goes. We're over the lovely Long Island Sound here, we're proceeding directly over to Bradley. I've not turned on any of the fancy uh, GPS stuff here, I'm doing this entire approach on my own. As we get a little bit closer to the actual approach itself, I will take a couple minutes to go ahead and actually kind of show you how you can load this into the GPS, but for now I'm keeping it a little bit old school here. So so first things first, if you remember our approach chart from last time, uh, it looks like we're going to be flying out of, again, we're using the Deer Park Arrival. This is going to be the one, I should say Arrival, not Approach. I'll confuse that a few times. We're going to arrive over Deer Park, and then we're going to go down to 11,000 feet, cross belt, go over to Madison, and then scoot scoot all the way up to Briss, maintaining 11,000 until we get here, and then swinging over there and kind of dropping down to 4,000. So I'll swing back over here, and uh, first thing we need to do is we need to get to Deer Park, which is lucky for us, is literally right ahead of us. I've already gone ahead and tuned our navigational radar and I've switched our CDI mode over to VOR mode so that we can go ahead and track this. So I'm actually going to recenter the CDI and you can see I'm pointing right to it. So I'm going to turn on my nav hold mode. I'm going to go ahead and flip on the automatic pilot. As soon as I do this it's going to freak out on me just a teeny tiny bit. And 11,000. Whoa! Come on GPS. Come on autopilot. You can win this. Sorry about that. There it goes. Oh, rust that. Nope. I'll go ahead and fly this myself. All right, I'm going to go ahead and pause because we're struggling with the autopilot as always. So now that I'm over Deer Park VOR, we need to proceed on the five tree radial. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to swing up to my course. I'm going to go ahead and drag this until it says five tree. You can see that right there. Notice I'm not getting a CDI line right away. Uh, the reason for that is I'm literally over the top of the station. Oh, there it goes. All right, let's go ahead and work to get this nice and centered. I'm going to swing myself back to the left. There we go. And now we are on course, just like that. Coming down to about 11,000 feet here. Looking pretty good. I can increase my torque in just a moment. So now normally, like I was saying in the previous video, you have to follow what air traffic control tells you. If they see, proceed by a, a certain arrival, they're literally telling you lateral navigation only. If they say descend via a certain arrival, that means you actually get to go through the full experience of trying to match each one of those altitudes as you're proceeding along the arrival itself. And that looks pretty good right about there. I'm going to go ahead and trim everything back out again. Hold Alt, turn on the automatic pilot. Looks good to me. All right, we are on course. So right now the automatic pilot is proceeding along the five tree radial of Deer Park VOR. We're about 11,000 feet. Actually, we're not because the thing's decided to uh, drift us down just a teeny tiny bit, but that's all right. Go bring us back up to 11,000. Uh, we'll go ahead and use vertical speed. That's a pretty good climb. That's going to get us up there way too fast. There it goes. Okay, we got it. Sweet. So once we go ahead and get to belt, so uh, how do we figure out when we have gotten ourselves to that next transition? Well, it's actually not too difficult to do. Uh, one of the nice things we have here is we do have some DME stuff built in here. We can actually determine exactly how far we are away from a big point like that. So I'm going to go over to my PFD map settings. You're going to notice it gives me a couple options down here for bearings. So in this case, I'm actually going to turn on bearing to nav one and now what you're going to notice is down here in the little left hand corner you can see the distance we are from deer park vor in this case for 7.8 nautical miles away and it's also a navigation one frequency no surprise because that's the one we're actually using to navigate right now when this number reaches 22 that will tell us that as long as we're on the five tree radial that we should be to that belt transition i should say that belt intersection is not a transition once we get there, we're actually going to switch over to Madison's VOR. Again, the tricky thing about VORs is the fact that all the radials are actually magnetic and not true. Now, when you're this part of the country, this part of the world, that can get a little problematic on account of the fact that many of these areas have very great uh, magnetic deviation. I should say magnetic variation. Magnetic deviation only exists in your compass. All right, I'm going to bring ourselves up to cruise power. One of the neat things about the TBM is that its cruise power is basically 100% torque, unless you're in a situation where you're going to overheat something, but we don't have to worry about that too, too much today. Another neat feature on the TBM, which I got subtickled by, is the fact that it uses left and right fuel tanks. 
However, it automatically switches itself every couple minutes. As a matter of fact, if you want to manually change what fuel tank you're on, you could actually reach above your head and press the shift button right here, and I would swap it for you, which is just kind of a neat little trick. Again, the TBM is something we'll take a look at another day. Okay, so we're about halfway to that belt intersection and as a matter of fact if you take a look at our mfd let's swing back to mfd mode real quickly normally you could go ahead and click all these different options to turn different pieces on and off and we could actually see that transition that we're crossing so again we'll let that kind of run for a second and now we'll go ahead and see how we could set this up if we were actually flying this normally and we wanted to use a gps coupled approach well to do that what we could do is we could go over here to flight plan we could set our origin in this case it was uh, newark new jersey go ahead and say enter and we could say our destination again was Bradley International Airport. Enter. And you can see that gives us everything we would need as far as that goes. The reason there's nothing visible on our little screen here is because we haven't actually told it how we want to get there yet. As a matter of fact, if you want to see a slick trick here, it actually gives us this as being our course on account of the fact is that's how you'd have to proceed direct between those two places. Now, if we wanted to, we could come over here to Bradley. And we can actually, that's exactly the way I want it. I'm going to go back. I'm going to click on proc, I can now click arrival, and you'll notice Deer Park 3 arrival is selected by default. We can actually come here and now select this, and if you look really closely, you can see it has already pre-selected all of the different waypoints that we were going to cross. So I'm just going to come down here and press the load button. Surprise! It loads all those details in for us. So we don't even have to fly this one by hand if we don't want to. We can just have the GPS do it for us. But in our case, we're going to be using the VOR because we like to make it complicated. So what are we waiting for right now? We're waiting about two nautical miles because in two nautical miles, theoretically, we should be crossing over belt. Then we need to switch to Madison VOR. Speaking of which, that's coming pretty darn soon. We better set that up. So I'm going to come here to audio and radio. I'm going to swing down to control. And all I have to do is dial in Madison's VOR, which is 110.40. Don't press transfer yet. The moment you press that, it's going to mess up everything. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to synchronize my heading. Notice we're 22 nautical miles and we cross the intersection. I'm going to switch to heading hold mode on. I'm then going to transfer. Give it a second. And now you can see we're slightly off course. Now, according to our arrival, if you're following along with it, we need it to now proceed on the 5 five radial so i'm going to go ahead and rotate this twice I'll get us right to five five and you can see we're perfectly on course now you're probably sitting there saying but you were on five five the whole time yeah that's because of that magnetic variation like i said it's very tricky now notice that vor while pretty darn accurate is not perfect as a matter of fact let me flip on my navigation mode again now we're tracking that vor and you can see that it has knocked us ever so slightly off course but it's still more than close enough for what we're trying to do here so once we get to madison by the way if we want to figure out how close madison is remember how we set up the bearing earlier we can see we're about 16 nautical miles away from it so once we cross that particular position we need to start our descent down to 4,000 feet. So I'm actually going to get that all kind of ready for myself as I'm going here. So we'll come up to altitude selection. I'm going to bring it down to 4,000 feet. Notice nothing happens. That's intentional. Now, how do we calculate our descent? Now, the whole arrival was designed so that you descend at about a three degree angle from whatever altitude you were at previously. So three degrees, as I was mentioned in the previous video, works out to be if you take your ground speed, watch out, ground speed, in this case, 285, and then you divide by two and add a zero, that is what our vertical speed needs to be at that current ground speed in order to descend at about a three degree angle. Again, that's an approximation. If you throw a lot of wind and stuff like that in there, it's gonna get a little complicated. So before I do that descent, I don't need to do that again until I get to Madison VOR, which is about 11 nautical miles away. Man, is this turboprop fast. Hey, we've been there before. Um, we'll go ahead and get a little bit closer. Another thing worth noting, too, is with these arrivals, every once in a while, you run into a situation where there's a waypoint that is a flyover as opposed to a flyby. In this case, this is a flyby waypoint because you can actually see us taking this little left turn here. If it was a flyover, we'd have to cross it before we can turn. So be very cautious that air traffic control doesn't give you an instruction like fly over Madison VOR, in which case we'd have to do it. Again, I'm not tracking the GPS right now. I am simply tracking that VOR that's located right here. Once we get 
to this position, we're going to have to reset that VOR to a heading of tree 41, as well as start our descent, which again, we're doing about 300 divided by 2, so we need a 1500 feet per minute descent in order to get down at that 3 degree angle. Obviously, if you slow down a little bit, we wouldn't have to go quite that fast. As a matter of fact, if you take a look right here, you can see the fact that as I start to descend, if I keep that speed in, I'm going to exceed the max speed of this aircraft once I get to thinner air. So kind of keep that in the back of your head. It might even be safer to just slow down to 200 knots so we can maintain that speed all the way down to the ground. Again, these are considerations you're going to have to play with. And again, listen to what air traffic control says. In the real world, they would have sent us probably down to 4,000 quite a while ago. All right, we're about five nautical miles away from Madison VOR. You can actually confirm that visually. We're tracking that 5-5 five, five radial. As soon as we cross it, we'll switch it to the tree 41. Now we could actually cheat here and dial it into tree 41 now if we wanted to, but I want to get just a tiny bit closer. Now notice because we're tracking the radial to this VOR station, we're literally zapping right towards it. If this were a like an RNAV or a GPS or something along those lines, that could be different. You can actually see how the GPS now expects us to go flip over to that new radial. I'm actually going to get a little bit closer and then we'll go ahead and transfer. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do my heading hold real quick. That way it doesn't go all crazy when I start cranking this knob. Crank this over to tree 41. Lovely. Switch back to navigation mode and you can see the aircraft starts to turn. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover to my vertical speed. Remember, we need 1,500 feet per minute, which is a lot. Don't forget to reduce your throttle a little bit also. That little wiggle, by the way, is because we crossed the station. Oh, there it goes. So now what we have to do is keep our torque just enough to keep our ground speed fixed while we descend. Now, one of the downsides to descending at a speed like this is it's going to be a little hard on the ears. Of course, we're a pressurized aircraft, so we don't have to worry about that as much. I don't know, just like in the real world, flying over those cities, things get a little bit choppy. Looks good. Again, we're not using the GPS here. This is completely done via. By the way, when you cross 10,000 feet, make sure your airspeed is less than 250. Otherwise, people get very, very grumpy. Another thing I want to mention about airspeeds, too, when you're flying these, is air traffic control from time to time will give you specific airspeeds. The slowest you can ever expect to be given as far as the speed is 150 knots. Obviously, if you're a turbojet aircraft, you're not going to be able to go that slow. Although, I mean, you'd be sitting there with the flaps hanging all the way down, basically. But for something like us and a turboprop, we can actually manage it. All right, we're proceeding quite nicely here. We've actually lost a lot of ground speed. So if we wanted to be more precise pilots, we could actually come in here and adjust our speed to match the new ground speed. Again, we're just tweaking our descent just a teeny tiny bit in order to be a little bit safer. By the way, it's very interesting to see that we're descending at almost exactly the angle that we need to be coming down at. This aircraft is about to take a very aggressive right turn in a moment. There we go. Notice navigation mode got kicked off when we crossed that VOR station. Had we not caught that, that could have messed us up quite a bit or later on. You can see we're now down to 16, which would be a 1,300 feet per minute descent, which you can see is exactly what we have it at. So if you were to actually look at this aircraft sideways, we'd be cruising down at exactly 3 degrees, which is exactly what we want. Keep in mind, different approaches, especially scary ones in a like London City Airport, are going to be a little different. And at no point have we actually activated the GPS. Now, some approaches do allow you to fly them via the GPS without using the VOR if you need them, but in this particular case, it doesn't. So let's go ahead and take a quick little look, and I'll kind of show you where we are as far as things go. I'll flip this on real fast. You can see right now we're proceeding right along this line. We're coming down. I'm sorry. We're right along this line, coming down to 4,000 feet. The instructions say that once we cross Madison VOR to Briss, we're supposed to get radar vectors to final approach course prior to Bis Briss intersection. So let's say for a second that uh, we go ahead and get a call from air traffic control. They say, hey, uh, uh, why don't you go ahead and um, use uh, ILS tree? tray. So we could actually, with this aircraft, preload that without actually activating it, which is a really slick trick. So I'm going to come down here to MFD mode. I'm going to go over to proc mode. Again, we're on the Deer Park 3 arrival. I'm going to click on approach, approach, and I'm going to take ILS tree tray. Now note, if you press load and activate, you're going to immediately flip the approach on. You want to be cautious. Just click load. And that's all you have to do. So now notice this thing's freaking out just a teeny tiny bit as it's trying to process what we need to do in order to get us there. But since we've been on the VOR, we have not been affected by this. Now it's actually a little unusual that it went right from arrival to approach, but that's okay. 
switch over here. I'm going to zoom out just a teeny tiny bit. And there you can see that would be our approach. It would take us to Homey first. And again, air traffic control would say, proceed direct Homey or something along those lines. And that would go ahead and take us in. So in this particular case, let's uh, say they've said that. They've called us up. And again, we haven't hit Briss intersection yet. They say, you know, proceed direct Homey, expect ILS, uh, runway tree tree, Bradley. And of course, you give all the permissions and you say, okay, let's do it. So we go ahead, come down here. We hit the activate approach button. And now we've gone ahead and done it. All we have to do now would be to proceed direct to Homey. So one thing we could do is we could come over to the MDFD. We can flip over here. Whoop. Let's go down real quickly here. I'm going to go down just a little bit. You can see our current situation is taking us to Homey directly. We could click that immediately. We could even say direct to, and we could come in here and uh, type that one in if we wanted to. So again, we'll just go ahead and say Homey. H-O-M-E-Y is a little different than the real one. Bear with me. Activate. And now you can see that we've been proceeding directly to that point. So now if I wanted to, I could actually come over here and I could flip us off. Let's go do it. Heading hold first. Flip that one on real quick. Now I could switch my CDI to the FMS. I could go ahead and flip back to nav mode. And now the aircraft is actually proceeding direct to Homey. We're now off the arrival, by the way, just in case anybody's gotten confused. And now that's going to line us up beautifully with a nice landing on ILS runway tree tree. So that's basically all there is to arrivals. Again, this is a nice little manual arrival. And the whole purpose here is just to get you off of the highways in the sky down to a position where you can actually approach. You can see how easily that was facilitated is. And the nice thing here is air traffic control could basically let us do all this on our own without any interference on um, basically other than altitudes, which would be a pretty common request. Also, speeds are very common, especially if you're in a very, very busy server. Go ahead and speed up just a little bit here and bring ourselves back up again. Like I said, I love how you can just do 100% torque and not really have to worry about it. It's such a nice feature of this aircraft. A lot of these were flat rated, and this one is as well, but they're a little bit more difficult to set. And now we're literally like perfectly set up. Now, if you're kind of curious, which maybe you are, maybe you're not, you're probably wondering, now that we've gotten this arrival that's lined us up so nicely with that approach, what would the actual approach have looked like if we were to go ahead and try to take a crack at it? Well, just taking a quick look myself, I have the approach place right in front of me. Boop! You can see that, surprise, surprise, there's the intersection. And this would line us up, like I said, perfectly, because this is actually your final approach fix, all the way down to the ground without any other interference. So again, that is super smooth, that's super simple. It's not a lot of extra work on our part. It's not a lot of extra work on everybody else's part as well. So anyway, hopefully uh, this has been helpful for you. Uh, next time we'll start taking a look at the individual approaches themselves. Uh, there's a lot of variations on approaches. You have everything from RNAV to ADF to VOR, you have ILS, you have localized, you have LDA, MLS. There's so many different ways you can get the aircraft from the arrival down onto the ground. They even have these things called PRPs, which are precision radar approaches, which are very, very, very interesting approaches where they basically tell you how close you are to being where you need to be. And you have to basically translate in your mind in order to figure that out. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in just a teeny tiny, but we are so darn close. You know, it might be worth it just to land this thing anyway. Because you can see there's the homey intersection right there. Let's go ahead and take a look at the procedure. You know what? Why not? We'll put it on the ground just because we can. Let's go ahead and flip down here. We'll go to the MFD. I mean, we've gotten this close, right? Go to my navigation radio. I'm on FMS mode, so I'm not really worried about this. We need 10855. Oops, I did not press the button all the way down. Struggling a little here. Let's go back just in case. Here we go. 10855. Sweet. And we should actually be getting information. We are. Look at that. We've already picked up the ILS all the way out this far. Man, this is a cool plane. So that's good to go. I, I'm just going to hit the switch it over and hit the approach button. What I do want to do is actually line myself a little bit better with Homey there. Normally, you'd be taking Hartford direct and uh, you proceed to Homey, then you'd be taking that gentle left turn. But in this case, I'll do it manually because it's just easy. So let's see here. We are going on a heading of 47 degrees. 60 degrees will be a little tiny adjustment. We want a little more than that. Let's do about 70 degrees. I'll flip on heading hold. This again is going to bring us off here to line us up a little bit nicer. Our altitude is almost perfect. We actually need to be at 2,500 feet when we get to Hadex intersection, but for Homey we actually need to be 1,800 feet. So I'm actually going to start dialing that in right away. All right, looks good to me. Might as well do a flight level change here. 
back the throttle back just a teeny tiny bit. We don't need an aggressive descent by any means. Come back over to MFD mode. I'm going to zoom myself in just a teeny tiny bit, make it a little easier to see what I'm doing. I can actually look out the window and the airport's literally right here, but that's okay. Flight level change is struggling a little bit here. I'll kind of push it along. Whoa! That is the world's most aggressive autopilot I've ever seen. <laughs> Note to self, do not trust automatic pilot. He does not, he's not qualified. <laughs> Assuming it's a he, right? And look at this. It actually gives you all the details you need to know about that approach before we've even gotten to it. Man, this thing is sophisticated. I feel like I'm running on sped up time here. Hey, there's the Connecticut River. Coming down in just a moment, we'll swing back to the north here. You can see our FMS is getting quite grumpy here. Doesn't surprise me. All right, go ahead and start swinging back to the other direction. It's going to be just looking at it. It's about 45 degrees, if I'm not mistaken. Looks pretty good. I'm actually almost ready to arm the approach. I'm actually going, we're not actually using navigation mode, so I can actually flip this over to localize it. Look at that. And at any time I want, I can come over here and mash the approach button. And now the aircraft will literally land itself. We just got to worry about making sure the lights are turned on at the right points. Whoa! I see that it just captured the approach. Start reducing speed. Stand by for landing. Stand by for landing. Standing by. Oh, I'm a little, a little hot today. So I'm actually going to turn the airflow up a little bit. And might as well get the fan too while we're at it. There we are. And that looks pretty good. Slowing down. In just a moment, this aircraft is going to take an aggressive left turn. And we're going to land the plane. 1,800 feet, we're a little early, but that's perfectly fine. Here we go, time to land. Landing All right, looking pretty good. We'll go ahead and throw our landing everything on in just a moment. I just want to get to a slightly safer speed. This actually is a really cool button that you can check to make sure the landing gear are down. Seems redundant, but it's actually pretty important. Stand by. Down go the landing gear. That's going to create a lot of drag on this thing. We're going to get a nice little warning that's going to say the landing gear is unsafe. The reason being is they're not down all the way. All right, we can do a check down. It goes boop, 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 boop. Yep, it works perfectly, just like the real one. Great touch. Go ahead and put our first notch of flaps down. And once we get under $1.20, we'll go ahead and slap that second notch down. Switch on my approach speed. Boop. Whoop. Go back. Donk. That way I can see it visually. Next notch of flaps goes down. And we got to make sure our landing light is set and all that other good stuff. I'm just kind of looking over the top of my head here. I'm going to flip that one on as well. And we are ready to land this aircraft already. Not bad, right? So again, because of that arrival, we didn't really have to do much with air traffic control. They basically give us the general instructions. We just sit in here, kind of sitting pretty until they give us that final approach clearance. Then we just got to put this thing on the ground, just like I'm doing right here. There's really not a lot to it. All right, our speed is set. Our flaps are down. Our gear is down. Everything is ready to go. If uh, we need to, of course, in this one, we want to make sure our yaw damper is shut off for takeoff and landing. That could be very dangerous. Somebody pointed that out to me the other day. All right, starting to get a little slow. That's all right, though. Neat thing with this version of the TBM is we only have a single power handle. We don't have a prop handle. We have to do all that by hand. Or I should say it sets itself automatically, which is just a little different. Looking pretty close. We're 4.1 nautical miles away from the end of the runway. Again, this is going a little bit beyond arrivals, but I thought it was worthwhile to actually see what you can do after you finish the arrival. Looking pretty good. We'll cover all the different types of approaches next time. Got a little bit of turbulence today, but nothing too bad. Uh, how are we doing down here today? Well, all these tobacco farms and everything like that. Well, Route 20 looks like it's backed up. Well, not too bad today. Not too bad. There's a nasty turn right here. You can see a little bit of it. Man, you can get killed on that corner. Oh, oh, I guess we're landing a plane. Sorry. Concentrate. Look at that. Approach speed is perfect. Flaps are down. Gears down. Man, we got this thing. I gotta tell you, when you throw autopilot into the mix, it, 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 you know, what else am I going to be doing? We could turn on strobe mode. No, <laughs> I'm not going to do that. All right, let's start thinking about landing.
Not a bad idea to shut up lead air too in case we need that extra boost, but I don't think we're going to need that today. I don't know about you, but this approach speed seems to be a little slow. Like, I'm noticing my nose is at a pretty steep angle. I always thought that, and again, I could be totally wrong on this, the TBM, when you approached, it was actually nose down. But again, that could just be my mistake. I've never actually flown in one of these in the real world, so I'm kind of going by what I've read. One last check. We use Giphy. So our gear is down, our inertial separator is set, our yaw damper is set, our flaps are set. We're good to go. I'll take it from here. I believe the automatic pilot tried to drive us into those trees. A little bit of a crosswind today, nothing too bad. This is one of the cool aircraft that actually has a working thrust reverser. Whoa, that felt weird. Eh, typical turbulence, I guess. couple feet off the ground and we're down nice we're here <laughs> all right hopefully this video was uh, entertaining as well as uh, informative again arrivals are pretty easy it's just a matter of finding the different frequencies or just using the g3 uh, i believe this is a g3000 in order to fly them for you one thing to keep in mind again like i said a hundred times air traffic control is going to tell you what altitude to travel at it's just important that you follow all those instructions and again like i said that dividing your airspeed by two and adding a zero on it is a really straightforward way to predict uh, how fast or how much vertical speed you need in your descent other than that Enjoy.